Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're going to, can you guess? Text, text, text. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Cack, cack. Michigan. Even when it was Ontario and Florida, I knew it was Michigan. Specifically, Highland Township, to talk about some pines. Circa 2011. The perfect family, they were known as, uh, and then, well, you know. Now this one, it really is, you know, a thinker. It's got it all, though not necessarily in the way that you might, you know, want. And I feel that by the end of this, you could really come down, you know, on, on either side. But before we get to the end, we gotta get to what comes before. So let's give it a go. To the northwest of downtown Detroit lies Highland Township. Population, roughly 20,000. Highland is my home, I'll love her till I'm gone. It's a nice little town, very safe comparatively. A family friendly city, good schools, sounds great, you know, come on. Let's all move there, right? My new favorite place. What's important is who lived there and had been for a while. That's the Pines. Made up of Bernie, Ruth, and their two children, Jeffrey and Julia. Bernie and Ruth had been mad about each other since high school, marrying about 10 months after their first date, ending up in a little town on the outskirts of Detroit. Their first child, young Jeff, was born in 1989. He was followed by the younger Julia about a decade later. The family were very happy. They were fairly successful, proud. Jeffrey was top of his class at the small West Highland Christian Academy. He was valedictorian, well liked on the basketball team. As high school was nearing its end, he began studying pre-med, hoping to go on to do even better and brighter things. Julia excelled in ballet, Ruth, down to earth gal, lovely. But things weren't always so, you know, spick and span. Uh, about two decades into their marriage, Ruth, she began to uh, suffer some, from some mental health problems. She couldn't sleep for days. She was hyper, and she would eventually be diagnosed with bipolar and uh, psychosis, and also uh, severe depression. Very manageable, if she took her medication. Sadly, she didn't. She began to think there were listening devices in the house. Worryingly, she began to stash knives, hiding them away. While the children were doing, you know, great and succeeding at school, Jeffrey, young Jeffrey, he got recruited into the honors program at the University of Michigan in Flint, Things back at the L gaff were not so good. Things uh, definitely did not get easier on the 27th of May 2011. That day, Bernie and Julia arrived home in the afternoon, about, uh, about 2.30. Uh, as they pulled in, parked the car, and then they tried to enter the house via the garage. Door would not budge. Wasn't locked. Wasn't moving. Bernie and Julia managed to peek through the door into the garage. And on the floor lay Ruth covered in blood. She was dead. Bernie called 911. The authorities arrived. You know, at first you think, was it self-inflicted? Was it an accident or was it the thing you want to think about least of all. It was that. She had been murdered, beaten, and stabbed. A 2x4 was missing from the garage. Yeah, a big old regular plank of wood. When she was examined, it appeared she had been hit 17 times with an object like that. Probably exactly that, as she also had defensive wounds on her hands and arms. Ones, you know, like a bit of wood would leave. And then, after she'd been beaten to the point her skull cracked, she'd been stabbed in the neck. Stabbed in the neck over a dozen times. There was no sign of forced entry into the home. Nothing, um, nothing missing. In fact, there's no real evidence at all. There were signs that one of the taps had been used to clean up a little bit of blood. But, other than that, there was like no, uh, direct evidence, you know, that would give you finger guns as to where to, uh, you know, that. So obviously with no signs of forced entry, you gotta think of people who had access to the home. And that leads you to the two boogles, the two lads who lived in home. First one being Big B. That's Bernie. Second of all was the young fella, 22 year old Jeff. 
Now things were not great for both of the lads in the home, reaching a crescendo uh, in 2010, so about a year before the murder. Shit went down. Ruth had been refusing to take her medication, and it led to a breaking point with Bernie begging her to take them to do something, anything. They couldn't live like this anymore. She said no, at which point Jeffrey entered the room and she just went for him. She grabbed him by the throat, she started beating him, she started strangling him. Jeffrey didn't fight back, and the police were called. She was arrested. She spent two weeks in jail before ending up where she, where she needed to be, which was in hospital. I called Bernard Pine to the stand. No, I don't want her to have to take medicine either, but it just seems like when she doesn't, all kinds of bad things happen. She remained there for about three weeks, and when she came back, she once again refused to take her medication. And that was like kind of it for Bernie. He was he was out of 5,000 by that point. Now Bernie who had already begun seeing another woman. So he just straight up asked Ruth for a divorce. And she replied that she would do whatever it took to keep their marriage from going kaput, including taking her medication. And so right before 51 year old Ruth Pine was viciously murdered, Bernie would say, you know, things were better than they had been in years. You know, they things were finally starting to feel normal. Again, like he had his old Ruth back. And then this happened. So, right? Fingers immediately started getting pointed at Bernie, right? A Bernie who had asked her for a divorce just a couple of months prior had been seeing another woman and also he had a bit of trouble in his youth. You know, back in the day, he had punched some guy into a coma after having a few too many subs down the local. Now, Ruth had gone shopping that morning. The investigators knew she left the store coming home around 11 a.m and she was found at about 2.30 p.m. At 1.30 p.m., an hour before she was found, Jeff, who had been home, left for work and said, you know, when he left at 1.30, she was fine, she had been in bed. So there was an hour, 1.30 to 2.30, when she was murdered. And Bernie said, you know, he was at a, he was at a retirement due for a colleague, and that was, that was backed up. That was proven that he wasn't home, you know, in those hours. It's always healthy, right? It's always healthy, come on! You know, and he has all the reasons, or, you know, a lot of the reasons we would usually see something to do, something like this. But it turned out he had zilch to do with Ruth's, Ruth's debt to the nth degree. He was not involved. So they cast their eyes to the younger Pine. And one of the things that actually, you know, <sighs> drew the police to him was that you know, after he learned his mother had been murdered, he rushed home. And the EMTs on scene noticed and bandaged blisters that were on Jeff's hands. Like he might get if you were roughing around with a bit of wood. He said it was a pallet, pallet from work, and it ripped open his blisters. However, employees at his job would say they had never gotten injuries like that. And where the blisters were in his hands was like he had been gripping something. And of course, he was also the last person to see Ruth suck in air. Was there any issue? Um, was she upset about anything? Or are they okay when you left? No, everything was fine. Okay. Well, what's wrong with your hands? Uh, this was from work today. I was flipping over a pallet on my way to check the bathrooms. And as I was flipping it over, my hand got caught in there. It just tore off the skin. Is it, can I see it? I mean, can you not do that? Yeah, you can. Okay. I can kind of pull it back a little bit and see it just... Just rip the skin right off. Let me see. I don't want to. Yeah. That looks painful. Uh... Luminol was used in Jeff's car. Nothing was found. The police also never found the murder weapons, either the 2x4 or the knife. It was around this time they began to suspect that Jeffrey was involved. In fact, up here, they were sure. There was no altercation, or, or your mom was not upset or anything today before you left? No, she, she was fine. Okay. Um, you know that your mom has passed away, right? What did he tell you happened? He doesn't know what happened. What do you think happened? I really don't know. I have no idea. I don't think she would hurt herself. She's not that type of person. Has she ever tried to hurt herself before? Not that I ever know of. You have no idea how your mom died or anything? No. Okay. Your mom was murdered. 
しにしておりますケースなねーNo mention of lilacs. And in fact, to the police, that sounded, that seemed like a voicemail he had made to cover his own ass. After that,、uh, he went to his other job at an orchard. The police spoke to Holly Freeman. Her and Jeffrey had just broken up, and they had been dating for a couple of years. One of the main things during her interview she emphasized with the police was that Jeffrey had been cheating on her, but he'd been able to hide it for a while. She really, like, really wanted to make sure that the police knew Jeffrey was a liar. Because cheating, and I guess lying about it, makes you a killer, apparently. Did you have any altercation with your mom today? No, not at all. Nothing at all? No. Okay.、Um, no type of fight, no type of argument, a n y t h i n g I didn't, didn't raise her. We didn't, we didn't even argue today. Okay. And you say that you left at 1 30. Can anybody verify that you left at 1 30? How, how can we verify that? I, I, I don't know. I can't. Nobody can tell us why somebody would do this to your mom and single your mom out of all people. I don't know. So, the theory was that Jeffrey, you know, he had been attacked by his mother a year prior. You know, he was scared for her. He was scared for his younger sister now that he, he was going off to college. He'd be out of the house. So, he was scared for his sister who would be alone with his mother. And he wanted his dad to,、um, to divorce Ruth and take. Uh, the, young, the younger sister with him and get out of the house away from Ruth. The divorce was taking too long, though whether Bernie was actually going to divorce her or not, it seemed like he had called it off. But the real question is if that's you know, the investigator's motive, was that Jeffrey was scared of his mother who could be violent and so killed her. It, but Bernie said you know, she had been taking her medication, everything was gravy lately. So the motive, me, a little bit flimsy. How well does everybody in the house get along? We all get along really well.、Um, especially since she's been on her medication. She,、uh, I don't know if my dad already told you she's bipolar. As she gets better, everybody's relationship in the house gets better. And I understand there's a time it wasn't so good. Well, it, it's when she goes manic, it, it puts a lot of stress on us all, and it, it, it's tough around the house.、So. But it hadn't been that way in a long time. When examined, there was evidence that Ruth had been taking her medication, like she said she would. So another theory was that you know, maybe she attacked him 
like she had done a year prior. Well, that didn't, that doesn't really hold up though. He also, other than the bruises on his hands, he had no marks, no scratches, no bruises, nothing on him, on his body. Like he had been attacked or the attacker and she had defensive wounds, so she may have fought back. If things were good, why would he kill her or be scared of her again? People also said about Jeffrey, you know, that he wouldn't hurt a fly. Even when he was attacked by others, he wouldn't go for the fisticuffs. But if not him, who? Random intruder try and break in and steal shit? Well, nothing was stolen, and there was no signs of forced entry. And also the way her body was lying, it was kind of it was kind of blocking the door. Nothing really points to it being a home invasion gone wrong, but anything's possible. The question is Jeffrey. A Jeffrey charged five months after the murder with murder. First degree. <sighs> But it's not, you know, oh, he did it because we don't have anybody else, or he probably did it. This was someone's life, so you have to be 110% sure. On May the 27th of 2011, Ruth Pine was a 51-year-old woman that lived in Highland Township with her, her daughter, Julia, who was 10, her husband, Bernie, and the defendant, her son. Also, as of that time, we know that Julia Pine suffered from bipolar disorder with psychotic features. And she made life very difficult for the family. You know that her son, Jeffrey Pine, murdered her. And he hit her in the back of the head. And he hit her again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. But that wasn't all, because when he was done doing that, he turned her over and he killed her again. And he stabbed her. He stabbed her in the neck on the left. And he stabbed her again, and he stabbed her again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and 16 times he stabbed her in the neck. This was an angry, angry killing. It was the result of years and years and years of things that had built up living with a difficult person. I want to make something perfectly clear before I get started, and that is we're not exercising a defense of insanity or self-defense or some other excusable homicide. We utterly, categorically, absolutely reject any notion of this unsubstantiated claim that Jeffrey Pine is responsible for the death of his mother. It's not just a could have or might have or would he have, it's a did. Okay, with a capital D. That's what the jury had to figure out when his trial began in 2012. Witnesses took the stand, talked about Jeffrey. None had any evidence he did it, other than speaking about his character. In fact, even when his ex-girlfriend, she took the stand, uh, and she came across, to me personally at least, more like a spiteful ex than anything else. Sorry. He had cheated on me. All right. Jeff was the perfect guy, the perfect son, the perfect boyfriend. And that was the first time ever that I had ever had a reason to doubt him. I, he just, he lied so effortlessly to me, to my family, to my friends. And no one could say he was violent. You never saw Jeffrey <coughs> react violently to anybody, did you? No. And you don't know who killed Ruth Pine, right? No. Nope. Thank you, no further questions. And you don't know who killed Ruth Pine, correct? Correct. The defense had, had well the real evidence. There was little to no evidence anyone cleaned up of the house. Some evidence the tap was used, but for how violent the scene was, you'd need a lot of taps. There was no evidence on Jeffrey, nor in his car, that he used that day. Nothing under his fingernails. His clothing, clean. Whoever did this, you know, they would have been like, carry style drenched. The interrogation was brought up during the trial. You know, of course, he, he didn't show any grief. People act differently. 
we probably have movies to blame for how people are expected to act, uh, to be honest. I'd say most people would act like Jeffrey. They'd be in shock. This was the day of the murder, and he was in shock. We are by nature a judgmental people. We impose our standards on others. We determine whether or not somebody said something the right way by the way we would have said it. We determine whether they acted the right way by the way we would have acted. Sometimes we determine whether or not somebody's sincere in their grief by the way we would have grieved. As the trial was coming to a close, the defense, uh, they felt pretty confident to be honest. They, they did a good job and no one could truly say he had done it or even truly point the finger at him. But right before, it, you know, the, the case was, I guess, handed over to the jury, the prosecution did something. They asked that the jury, you know, who were given a choice between first degree murder or not guilty, be given another option. They can choose between not guilty, first degree murder, or second degree murder. The second uh, degree murder charge and counsel has objected. Uh, we are entitled to that lesser included offense I'm asking for. Thank you. We do not believe that the evidence supports first degree, let alone second degree. I'm concerned that the jury will compromise their verdict based on emotion and the evidence in this case or lack thereof. So I would ask that second degree be left out. If you find the defendant guilty of murder, you must state in your verdict whether it is first, it is murder in the first degree or murder in the second degree. That kind of sealed it. When given an option between first degree, second degree or not guilty, most juries, if they are not entirely sure about it, will go with the second degree. You know, the middle option, right? You know, kind of, sort of. Of the state of Michigan versus Jeffrey Pine, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty of second degree murder. Would you like the jury polled, Mr. Champion? I would, Your Honor. In December, after three days, the jury came back with a guilty of second degree murder verdict. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I continue and will always maintain my innocence in this crime. I hope and have faith that one day the truth will be made known and I will be acquitted. However, Your Honor, I do realize that because I was convicted, you must sentence me. And I accept this is the duty of the court. I do, however, ask you for leniency and compassion. The jury rendered its verdict. However, nobody knows who killed my wife. I am sure that my son had nothing to do with this, but must try to live with the verdict. I would ask for leniency in his sentencing so that what is left of our family can be put back together. Jeffrey was sentenced a month later. He was given 20 to 60 years in prison. Throughout all of this, Jeffrey's dad, Bernie, and his little sister, Julia, stood by him, believing his innocence. There's no evidence tying my son to this crime, and there's a good reason for that. He didn't do it. And he maintains his innocence. He's always gonna, he is innocent. So there you have, uh, this old one. It's an odd one. Not entirely sure he did it. Neither evidence nor motive to say he definitely did it, beyond, beyond a reasonable doubt anyway. He's in prison to this day, earliest release date being 2031. An appeal in 2015 was denied by the Michigan Court of Appeals. So please, here, let me know what you got going on up in here regarding this old one, you know. Did he? Didn't he? You can really come down on either side in this old one. And I guess that is what makes it so uh, fascinating, you know. Pine proven guilty, or Pine got poo-pooed. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy uh, life to watch this old video here with me. Uh, it means the world. So sure, here. Go on, I'll see you as always real soon in the next old video, which will be coming very soon. Until then, please take care of yourselves. I love you. Bye.